For those of you that are, well, probably both the, both the uh, certificate folks and the degree program people, if you're going to be with me for the next two days, you're going to be familiar with this document. This is called a Steward Leader Life Plan. And we designed this so that you have a vehicle to take what you're learning and put it into a form that you can take with you and, and help you to execute, implement what you're learning here in your daily life and ministry. I just want to show you real quickly what, what the students will be going through. This is after part one. And it begins with this question of, it's all his. The journey of the faithful steward begins with one simple transformational affirmation. Everything that exists in every sphere of our life belongs to God and God alone. Everything. Think about the four spheres of your life, relationship with God, yourself, neighbor, and creation. Examine each one, then list below eight to ten things that are the hardest for you to affirm as God's alone. So for those of you who are just here today, um, this is a good, uh, one of the good takeaways. To go spend some time in prayer and ask yourself, what's hard for me? to say that this is God's and not mine. We'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. But that's kind of the first thing. It's kind of confession, isn't it? Whenever we uh, want, want to see a change in our life, we usually need to start with contrition and confession. That's a little bit of it. And then go ahead and, and scroll down, Sean. <coughs> and then you have an opportunity to write your own definition of yourself as a faithful steward. And this is where you put down and say that I, Zenit, am a faithful steward when I, what? Because when we make the definition ours, then we can really get a chance to say, okay, this is how I'm going to live my life as a faithful steward. And then a little bit more confession. This gives us an opportunity to look at our relationships, uh, my relationship with God, uh, knowing my mandate from God, understanding the expectations that God has on me, being guided daily by God, and being prepared for and accountable to God. In each of those areas, where, how are you doing? How, do you, how, do you, how are you doing? Does your life reflect a high level of dependence on God or are you more depending on yourself? So it gives you a little checklist to look at and say, am I a one, am I a 10, am I a three, a five, a seven, or whatever. And then finally, a commitment. Because I believe strongly that the Christian life is, is about saying, if I'm going this way and God wants me to go that way, I've got to, to put some stakes in the ground. And I have to say, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna make a commitment today to do something different. And these are commitments that you can make. As a steward, uh, a steward must have a relationship with the owner. What do I need to do today to strengthen my relationship with God? To steward my relationship with God. One of the things that I found remarkable as, this, as I was working through this is, um, do any of you ever have tr struggle a little bit with devotional time, making time for daily study, devotions, meditations, and all the rest of that. Anybody? Am I the only one in the room that struggles? Oh, good. Some other buddies. I'm glad to know that. Hate to struggle alone. Um, well, I always used to see that as kind of a duty, as an obligation, as something I should do if I'm a good follower of Jesus. But when I, think, when I found out that, that this is a stewardship process, that my relationship with God is a gift that I have in Jesus, and now my job is to be a steward of this relationship. Now, when I see it as, what, as part of my life as a steward, it takes on a little different meaning for me. I'm a little more able to make it a priority and to say, no, I'm, I'm going to be a good, faithful steward of this relationship with God and make sure that I'm putting the time into, into abiding, right? Abiding. It's John 15. It's abiding in Him. That's a stewardship responsibility. Um, a, um, a mandate from the owner, understanding the expectations of the owner, receiving guidance from the owner, and the accountability and rewards that come from the owner. What I have students do, those of you that are doing this, is to come up with a scripture that speaks to you about each one of these areas. And, and the Bible's full of it. This is just the gospel. So there's a lot of scripture in there that speak to the, each of these areas. Put in there a scripture that speaks specifically to you, and then I think go on down. Oh, that's it. Go ahead and up there. You go back up. I'm sorry, that's the end of, of part one. Um, and then out of that, when you get to the end, you're going to see that I'm going to ask you to make one significant commitment. What, would, what is God saying to you that is going to help you take the next step from being an owner to being a steward? And then you have scripture. You have your definition of what it means to be a steward. You've named areas in your life that you need to work on. 
So it's just a little tool that we'll use throughout the whole course. There's seven of these parts, and uh, each one of them um, was something you'll work through, and then at the end you'll have these seven commitments. If any of you who are just here for the day are interested in the document, I'd be happy to give you get your copy of it. So let me know that. Okay.